The wife of one of three British plane spotters who've been arrested in the United Arab Emirates says that she would never have thought his hobby would result in detention. Conrad Clitheroe and two friends were apparently taking notes near Fujairah Airport when they were accused of committing a national security offence. He was really upset, really choked up and... Uh, kept asking if we were okay, but I was obviously more concerned if, if he was okay. He didn't have any information about the case, he didn't really have any information about what the charges were. Uh, it was all very unclear. He has had this hobby since he was a young boy. He used to uh, go plane spotting with his father and he's sort of carried on that tradition. He does really enjoy it and he would never put himself or any of his friends and family in this sort of position where we would be so worried and everybody be under such stress. I don't think for one minute he would have thought that plane spotting would uh, have, you know, caused this sort of issue. I'm joined by Alex Macheras, who's a plane spotter himself and an aviation expert. Evening, Alex. Um, Every now and then, cases like this come up. Greece a few years ago, where the whole crowd of Brits got uh, put in custody and now here in the Emirates. I assume that there's always a bit of a risk of breaching security involved, is there in some parts? There is, yes, like in some parts of the world where plane spotting isn't widely understood, for example, in the United Arab mm. Emirates, um, because it's not understood, it's actually frowned upon. And so because of that lack of understanding, they immediately tr treat it as suspicious and, uh, and then start raising questions. And as we know, at Fajara, they have actually taken action and, and put these men in prison. Presumably, most of you plane spotters would kind of know the dodgy places where you might get into trouble, would you? You would, yes. I mean, there are a variety of plane spotters that work with airports around Europe and in America, and they sort of visit designated areas where you are allowed to successfully plane spot. You're allowed to take photos, you're allowed to log registrations, and that's what they sort of enjoy. Um, however, Fujairah is a highly sensitive airport 80 miles away from Dubai, and um, there, there is sort of things going on there they would prefer to be kept private. So I think just by being around that perimeter fence, is risky in the first place. Um, this could be why they've taken such a drastic measure now. Of is it made pretty clear to plane spotters where, where, which airfields are out of bounds? Because presumably there are a lot of security issues around the world, aren't there? Yes, definitely, especially at where we've got like air force bases where they do, you know, sort of exercises that they would rather the public not know about. Um, and so there are signs warning people, you know, to stay away from the fence, no photography allowed. And generally, a variety of plane spotters will, you know, abide by this. But um, there are holidays that plane spotters, you can go online and now specifically visit sort of derelict, untouched areas where things are happening, but the plane spotters are there to sort of grab it on photo or on camera. And, uh, and that's causing problems across the world. Well, I imagine there are your... Um you know, a naturally nosy bunch, aren't you? You're pretty curious, which is why you, you go and take the numbers down and check all these things out. So you are going to push the limits, aren't you? I think those in the industry sort of associate themselves in terms of they, they find a registration for a plane and they'll say, I flew that plane to LA, I was a passenger on that aircraft. And then for some reason, that exact registration has a place in their heart where then they feel, you know, it doesn't matter if it says no photography. I was on that plane last year. I'm taking a photo of it. Now, I mean, here in the UK, you were telling me that that actually you, there's now a more sort of formal arrangement with the airports and with police where you've pretty much got a pass. They know you're there, they know who you are, and they'll allow you in close. Yes, yeah, so an example of this is at Stansted Airport, and they've worked with Essex Police to ensure that if you want to plane spot around the airport and the terminal, then you sort of go through them, you give them your details, they check you out, and providing everything comes back okay, then you get a pass, which means that you won't be hassled and that you can plane spot in the legal areas um, safely and, and securely. And you can help with security, I gather. And they do. They have a designated number which they can text or call to say, you know, look, I've seen so-and-so over there. He hasn't got a pass. He's not an official plane spotter for that airport. Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe he's worth checking out. Is it a terribly British thing 
plane spotting? I mean, I can't imagine many places in the world have plane spotters apart from us, do they? I think you'd be surprised. I think <laughs> in Europe they have much more, and America, LA is labelled as the plane spotting heaven because mm. they build and invest on terraces at mm. airports wow. purely for people to visit the airport, stand on the terrace and get the family photo with the American Airlines jet in the background. Wow. So, you'll start writing your travel guide to plane spotting airports. Thank you very much, Alex. But, Chair, it's very good of you to tell us about your hobby.